never changing. Oh, faithful God. You are faithful God. Oh, unfaithful God. Faithful God. Oh, faithful God. You are faithful God. Oh, faithful God. Oh, you're faithful God. You're a faithful God. You're a faithful God. You're a faithful God. You're a faithful. Sing it out. You're a faith. You're a faithful God. You're a faithful God. You are. You are. You're a faithful God. You're a faithful God. New Song family, I'm so glad you're with us today. I'm so glad that you've taken the time to join us. I have a very important message for you from the Holy Spirit, uh, talking about different masks that we wear. And um, we might wear face coverings when we go in and out of places, but can we just make a decision? Let's not put on masks that disguise who we are. Masks that leave us spiritually dead. Masks that leave us without passion to express our worship. Masks that leave us depressed, hopeless, um, and masks that keep us stuck in our sin and addictions. It's no good. It's not worth it. Uh, the Bible talks about the devil being the father of lies, and he is masquerading around, seeking those who he may devour. I uh, see a picture today of a costume shop. And all of us are uh, not planning to enter the con costume shop, but we find ourselves going in. The devil is the owner, and he is an expert on masks. And he starts trying on all kinds of masks on us. And before we know it, 
we're looking in the mirror at ourselves and saying, well, this one looks pretty good. We don't even realize we put it on. It seems innocent enough, which is part of the devil's craftiness. You see, he doesn't say, hey, put on this atheist mask. He knows that we're not going to uh, be tricked by that. Hey, put on this murder mask. You'll love this one. Of course, we wouldn't do that. Hey, try on this sex trafficking mask. You're going to love it. Of course, we're not going to say uh, this looks good on us. And I don't want to be so blunt, but that's the way the devil is. He, he's, he's more crooked with us, with church people. He's more dangerously subtle. And today I want to talk about uh, four disguises we find ourselves unintentionally wearing that keep us from our calling. The first one is the disguises that distract us. I'm going to get right into it today. Yes, I understand we all have stuff to do, right? We have stuff to do. I got stuff to do. I'm busy. I'm busy, busy, busy. Do you have time? No, I'm not sure. I'm so busy these days. But have we ever taken a step back to evaluate what stuff in our lives is completely essential? If there was ever a time where we should understand what stuff is needed and what stuff just makes us busy, it should be now. I found myself having days in 2020, especially back in the early part of this pandemic, where I did nothing. I mean absolutely nothing. And neither did anyone else in my family. We sat at the table and we stared at each other. That was it. There was nothing else going on. And those days end up being, ironically, some of my best memories. I look fondly on those unique days because those were days when the world stopped. What can we learn? What can we learn from not being distracted? Distractions come in many forms work, engagements you're obligated to go to, expectations from family members and people that um, from work and other places, uh, bills, all kinds of distractions. And Jesus confronted a busy person with distractions like this. And we're going to look at Luke chapter 9, verse 59 through 62. And I'm going to read it in the New King James Version. And sometimes we misunderstood stand what was going on here. Jesus simply says to the man, follow me. Follow me. Come after me. Be a Christ follower. But the man says, Lord, let me go first. Bury my father. And Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But you, you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. And Jesus said, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We might look at the scripture and say, maybe I'm following the wrong person. I don't like what he said here. It doesn't sound like he's uh, showing love. I don't get, uh, there's no mercy, there's no grace here. And I think that we misunderstand what is going on because Jesus really wasn't saying, you can't go to a funeral, you can't say goodbye, you can't uh, just take care of a quick a couple of affairs, he was confronting the man's desire to do his own thing. You see, often when uh, you say you're going to go and bury your, your family member, that means you're going to get their affairs in order, you're going to take over their business, you, it's, it's going to take years, possibly decades, before you get to uh, the thing that you were going to do. And Jesus is confronting this man's desire to do his own thing. 
And he would say the same to us. And I ask you, what does stuff distract you from? Does stuff distract you from your mission, your first love, whatever you want to call it? It distracts you often from listening to God's voice. Oh, what a, what a novel idea to listen when God speaks. Can I ask you, when was the last time you really listened to what God might be saying to you? It takes some awkward silence. It takes some time to, to rest and to sit still and to not be distracted by stuff to hear from God. I talked to someone last week who said, Sorry, Pastor, I can't make it to church because I have to work on my kitchen. I thought about not sharing this today, but I wanted to say you have five months stuck in your house. Couldn't you have worked on it then? And then they said, you know what? No, I'll just watch online. Now, nothing against watching online. Thank you for watching with us today. I think it's a great option. But first of all, I wanted to ask the person, why did you say just watch online? And then next, I wanted to say online church is not for folks too lazy to put on church clothes and get to Sunday service. I didn't say that, but that's what I felt. It's for those immunocompromised that have medical reasons that they should stay home. The masks of distraction marginalize Jonah's calling. We talked about him, right? And when God is speaking to you and you don't listen, you won't hear the next thing he says. It marginalized Jonah's calling. It also happened with David when he was marginalized by a distraction called Bathsheba. It happened with Samson when he was marginalized by a distraction as well uh, called Samson and Delilah and then many other times in the Bible one really uh, important one that sticks out where someone was distracted from their calling was uh, Martha uh, with Jesus that day and, and Jesus said why are you bothered or distracted or taken with so many things when only one thing is needed so be careful for the disguises that distract us. Another disguise we find ourselves unintentionally wearing that steals away our calling is the disguises that scare us. We're gonna talk about that in just a minute. Uh, stay, stay right here. Do not touch that dial. I don't know if there is a dial, but I've always wanted to say that. We'll talk to you soon. family thanks for joining us for church at home if you're watching live make sure to light up the comments with your amens and your hellos to one another if you are watching later consider hosting a watch party and invite others to watch with you also make sure to share the broadcast on your Facebook because this might be the only church some might consider we are meeting in person on Sundays at 10 a.m. at New Song when you are ready to join us but take note church at home broadcasts will still be available throughout the transition as well as some great kids resources Women's Monday Bible Study, New Song Youth, and other small groups have started again. Check the website for details. If you want details on all of our events, make sure to subscribe to our emails and texts at the bottom of our homepage on our website. Have a blessed week. Giving to your local church should be easy. And with Tidely, it is. Just download the app and securely register your credit or debit card. You're done. Now you can give during church services or anywhere else. Use Tidely to give a one-time gift or set up recurring donations. It's that simple. It's fast, secure, and easy to use. Tidely, the simplest way to give to your local church.
can fuck with a kid. Okay, we are back. And I wanted, we just got finished talking about the mask, the disguises that distract us from our calling. I want to talk about another one that the devil tries on us uh, when we're least expecting it and we find ourselves wearing it. It's the disguises that scare us. It's a great one to talk about around Halloween, but unfortunately, this is part of the pandemic that we are facing in our world. Not only has it uh, attacked the United States, but it's attacked the whole world. This pandemic of the coronavirus, but also the pandemic of fear. It's deadly. And I would say this, yes, there is a real virus. And yes, uh, we need to be careful of it and people are getting sick from it. And sure, yes, we you can read statistics that say that less and less people are having serious consequences from it. But regardless, the fact is there is an enemy called COVID-19. There is an enemy called cancer. There is an enemy called HIV. Whatever you want to call it, whatever that enemy is, it should not paralyze your pursuit of your calling by distracting you by scaring you fear almost kept an entire generation of people from experiencing the promise god had for them they had been wandering for years looking for a land to live and jesus had a promised land for them full of safety and peace and um and milk and honey it was going to be great but right before they got in it was almost hijacked away for them by some spies who did uh, find themselves wearing the masks that scare them that made them afraid it says in numbers 13 31 the men who had gone up with him said we can't attack those people they are stronger than we are there's no way they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land that they had explored they they thought it was great but they said the land we explored devours those living in it all the people we saw there are of great size we saw the Nephilim there which if you research Nephilim were the descendants of Anak uh, came from the Neph Nephilim they were um, the same group that um, Goliath came from they were giants and they said this, something historic that we remember today, and we should not ever need to repeat this line. He said, we seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Grasshopper syndrome is real. When we forget who we are in Jesus Christ, we compare ourselves with grasshoppers against the ants of fear. Did you hear what I said? Think about it. When you let your mind run wild, just let it run wild for a little bit. Turn on the news, read the newspaper, talk to even a friend at times, and your mind might run wild. Uh, COVID or, or college or colds or whatever you want to be afraid of becomes a giant in your life let me tell you this you're not as small and insignificant as you think you are you're not as small and insignificant as you think you are why because you need to remember who you are in Christ. You are a child of God. I love the song, I'm no longer a slave to fear because I'm a child of God. And when you are a child of God, you realize you have a calling to accomplish. And God would never allow you not to accomplish the calling he has for you. He's got you in the palm of your hand. I remember leading a missions trip of teenagers in another country during the swine flu. It was the perfect storm. I don't know how it happened, but I'm leading these kids and I am 
uh, terrified that someone is going to get this virus. I remember uh, passing around the the um, hand sanitizer at every place we went watching after the kids. And one day in our devotions, early in on the missions trip, God spoke to me. A novel idea once again. God spoke to me when I was quiet and listening, and he spoke to my fear, and he encouraged me. He encouraged me. How about that? When we listen, God speaks. And in courage, he brought courage to me. And yes, we needed to still be smart, but I was no longer plagued with uh, letting this destroy keep me from the calling that we had on this missions trip and everyone stayed safe. I realized that um, the swine flu had become a giant in my mind unproportionately to the threat that was there, although there was a threat. Let me tell you, if your enemy looks big, because usually your enemy, and if it's fear especially, it will look bigger than you. Remember, you are a giant killer. Also remember, it's not really a giant. It just looks like a giant and you feel like a grasshopper. The world has always had enemies. The world will always have enemies. When coronavirus is gone, when this pandemic disappears, hopefully when this injustice in our country is solved, when elections are over, there will still be enemies. There will still be the threat of fear. Remember this, we live our lives based on faith and trust in God our Creator. Period. That's what we live our lives on. That is our foundation. If that is the case and we truly trust God. We truly trust Jesus. We truly trust the Holy Spirit to be with us. Nothing, no thing on this earth should scare us into stopping that trust, should intercept, should get in the way of that trust. Nothing should get in the way of trusting. I need you, Jesus. Yes, without him, we can do nothing. With him, all things are possible. Period. If we trust God, we can live in the midst of giants even and without letting them steal or keep God's promises from us. We can be in the midst of them. You know that when they finally inherited the promised land, they still had to go through and get rid of the giants, but they did inherit their promised land and they did uh, experience blessing. But uh, in the blessing, they had some giants they had to conquer. I'm going to read four verses in a row. And they speak to this, that no virus, no pandemic, no government, no election, no thing should steal your courage and cause you to live in the disguise of fear. Romans 8, 35 through 39. Please don't get distracted or bored as I read four straight verses in a row. Listen, because they speak to this time that we live. Who shall separate us from the love of God? That is the question. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all day long. We to live as Christ, to die is gain. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. We've surrendered our lives to Jesus. Verse 7, no, in all of these things, we are more than conquerors for through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, things present, nor even the things that are to come, nor height, nor depth, 
nor any other creature shall be able to separate you and I from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. It's time we confront head on the mask of fear that the devil puppets God's people to wear that causes us to think and act without walking in the spirit. We're walking along in life serving Jesus and fear will keep us from walking in the power of the Holy Spirit if we allow it to be put on us. This mask of fear is not just a feeling, it is a spirit. The Bible is clear. It says, do not let the spirit of fear into your life. Uh, do not have the spirit of fear, but, a, a, but have a sound mind. Um, these are some of the things that the spirit of fear will do. It will terrorize your trust in Jesus. It will deceive your godly wisdom. It will intimidate your dependence on the Holy Spirit. It will bully your calling and your mission. It will threaten your purpose and direction. And it will exchange your joy, your peace, your love, and all of the other fruits of the Spirit for despair, for anger, for hopelessness. I think that in the future, I'm going to take this message, in fact, even for our live service in person, and just talk about the spirit of fear for one whole week, because you can't, um, it's, it's too big of a subject. But today I'm going to just uh, broadly um, talk about the, the different uh, disguises that I think are the most important. The devil, it's like he schemed and said, can I keep uh, people from church? Can I keep them from evangelism? Can I keep them from ministry and impact uh, through tricking them into wearing the mask of Satan worship or witchcraft? No, of course not. That won't work. It won't work for me. I won't be uh, tempted by the spirit of witchcraft or Satan worship. But just as demonic, but ever more appealing, ironically, is the mask of fear. Let me talk about one more deadly mask, deadly disguise before we uh, uh, say goodbye for today. This, this mask is another one that we unintentionally wear that steals away our calling. It's the disguises that make us comfortable. It seems innocent, doesn't it? The disguises that make us comfortable. Let me help you understand what I mean by sharing what Jesus said to a man who I think he thought was too comfortable. Luke chapter 18, verse 18, it says, a certain ruler asked him. So this guy had some power, he had some authority, he had some money. And he said, good teacher, what shall I do to, uh, you know, to get in the club? What do I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God. I don't know what he was saying here. There's a lot of things you could surmise from this. But one thing I think he's saying is, okay, I'm seeing right through you, dude. I know what you're going at. I know what you're wanting me to say. And um, you already bugged me because I see that you are um, too comfortable in your life. And he says, um, you know the commandments. He goes on, don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't bear false witness honor your father and mother you know the commandments and he said the man said the rich ruler said all these things I've, I've, I've kept I've, I've, I've never committed adultery or in other words he's saying I don't wear these masks I'm not uh, I'm not uh, tricked by the devil with these masks so when Jesus heard him he said to him you still lack one thing in other words you have one more mask and I know what it is, and you know what it is, but you don't even realize that you're wearing it. You're too comfortable. This is the way Jesus said it. Sell all you have and distribute it to the poor, 
and you then will have your treasure in heaven. You'll get to be in the club. You can then come follow me. You can be uh, like Christ. You can be a Christian. And when the man heard this, instead of getting excited, he became very sorrowful because he was rich. God isn't calling you. Let me, let me reassure you. God isn't calling you to sell every item you have. No. All he asks you to do is give your entire life in surrender to him. Die daily. Take up your cross. Deny yourself and follow me. If you can't do that, which that is the challenge we are living with through our lives until the day we die or until the day Jesus comes back. If we can't do that, then we probably have a mask on called being too comfortable. You could use the word complacent here. It's the typical American mask. It's the same mask we criticize in movie stars and celebrities and millionaires. It's the same mask they wear. It brings a false sense of security. It brings a false sense of safety that's not found in Jesus. We find our safety, our security often in materialism. It causes us to look other places as our source. And we forget our center. Remember, John 15, 15, I believe it is. John 15, 5, he says, um, I am the vine, you're the branches. When you live with me, when you abide with me, I and you, you and me, you bear fruit, you bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. We must stay connected to our source. What's comfortable look like to you? It's partly the mask we dealt with last week. The Pharisees rested on their own righteousness and the blind man was desperate, right, for a touch from Jesus. Being comfortable keeps us from being desperate. The very thing God often looks for and responds to in us. Comfortability, being uh, that way is deadly because it'll keep us from, uh, from reaching the heart of God. It'll keep us from experiencing fullness in Christ. And I say this, God, give us a maskless church that is desperate for a touch from you. When Jesus asked the man, what do you want me to do for you? We say, when, when he asks us, we say, Not, nothing, I don't think I'm good. I have this, I have this, I'm comfortable. It's the subtle anthem of a blind American church headed for destruction, becoming white washed tombs. The subtle anthem of a blind American church headed for destruction. When we think on the outside we're fine, but inside we're dead bones. Three masks we need to consider today. Let's not, let's not let the disguises that distract us, the disguises that scare us, or the disguises that make us comfortable keep us from our calling. I want you to do a couple of things today. First of all, like I say often, ask the Holy Spirit, what do you want to speak to me through what he said today? What does, what does the Holy Spirit want to say to you? Any of these masks getting in the way of your calling? The mask that distracts you, the mask that scares you, the mask of comfortability, of complacency. Remember, they're very subtle. They're dangerously subtle. And we might wear them unintentionally, but they are no less deadly. Let's lay them down today. Maybe the mask of being comfortable is manifested by church attendance or by not giving God your offerings. Maybe the mask of fear manifests itself in your lack of peace and your lack of joy. Maybe the mask of distraction makes it difficult for you to hear when God speaks to you. Don't let that happen. Jesus said this, 
and I close before we pray. Matthew 19, 24. He says, again, I tell you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. Well, I'm not a rich man. In other words, he's not just talking to millionaires. You know what? You know that we are rich uh, in, in the world standards. We are richer than any other nation. We are rich and we are being complacent and busy and afraid and they mask our ability to be kingdom people. In fact, we feel like camels sometimes trying to go through the eye of a needle. When we try to worship and we try to display Christ to those around us, it's because we have let these things distract us. It gets easier. It does get easier, but beware, be aware of the mask that the devil tries to trick us into trying on and say, not today. I choose Christ. Would you pray this with me and repeat it after me? Maybe um, you're by yourself or maybe you're with other people, but would you at least say this under your breath? Dear Lord, I will not be distracted from my calling. I will not get too busy or too comfortable to hear you speak to me. I will not let myself be a slave to fear. I am a child of God and I will walk in freedom. Say that again. I am a child of God and I will walk in freedom. I will allow peace and joy to reign in my thoughts. Say that once more. I will allow peace and joy to reign in my thoughts. In Jesus name. Amen. We'll see you soon. Have a good day. Peace. Thanks for joining us for Church at Home. I hope you were encouraged today and will share this with a friend who may never come to a live church service. If you made a new commitment to Jesus today, text the word New Start to the number below. That's all one word, New Start, and we will send you some great resources to help you in this journey. If you would like prayer, text the word prayer to the number below and our team will pray for you and reach out to you as well if you would like further connection. If you are watching on YouTube, subscribe to our channel by clicking the button to stay up to date on all of our broadcasts. And finally, if you are watching on Facebook, make sure to share the broadcast with someone. Remember, they might only be one click away from finding Jesus. It's quick and easy and there are thousands of people in Colorado Springs who may not even go to church, but will join us online. Have a blessed week.
be upon you and a thousand generations and your families and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your families and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your families and your children and their children we come to you and we pray for this nation and the earth actually right now the whole world for that perfect peace that passes all understanding to flood every heart every life and that worship and intercession will be our weapon it would be our warfare and when anxiety hits us like a flood that we would turn to you and turn it into worship every heartache we turn it into worship and we'd be known as a generation of praise this specific generation in time would be known as a generation of praise. And I prophesy a song of praise to flood and fill the earth right now, from the young to the old, and every heart would be turned to you, that this would be a moment in history, a moment in time, where a revival of the heart would spring out across the world, the greatest awakening we've ever seen, that every soul will be drawn to you, Lord, right now in this moment in every family. I pray, I prophesy a renewing and a restoring of the family unit right now across the world. Just have a couple other of you pray out. Father, we just pray that just no fear in Jesus' name. And Lord, that you would just cancel this virus. We come against this in Jesus' name. We plead the blood of Jesus over this thing. Every life affected, even the normal flu, we cancel sickness in Jesus' name. Right now, Father, we thank you for your healing, that you are the healer. And everyone that is has the sickness at this time, God, we command a healing over their bodies in Jesus' name. Lord, every hospital, every home, Father, that your presence would flood it, your healing presence, God. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We thank you for your healing and for your mercy. We ask for mercy over the world, God. We ask for mercy, just mercy, God. Thank you, Lord. We pray for homes and families, God, that you would just give great peace to the children. God, I pray for the children, there's the joy and out of the mouth of babes, Lord, that they would just start to sing even in this time and that there would be no fear. 
but only the wisdom of heaven, God, knowing what to do in the moment. Father, we're following you. This is an unprecedented time, but you have not left us alone, Lord. You are leading us and guiding us, and we trust you, Father, and we follow you, and we just are so thankful for who you are and all that you're doing. Wondering where God's gonna say hi. Yeah, you're looking at church in the night sky. Wondering where God. Sing it with us. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Salvation and glory. Giving honor and power. Honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. For the Lord our God is mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is yes, mighty. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. Come on, lift your hands and say the Lord. Wonderful. Come on, Alto, sing the song. Testify this morning. 